Another method of constructing intervals, other than counting the number of whole and half steps between them, is to memorize and make use of the key signatures associated with the bottom note of the interval and compare the top note of the interval with the diatonic note that normally exists within that key. Looking at the illustration, we see that when we use scale degree 1 as a baseline, the basic numerical value of each interval, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc., is quite easy to determine just by counting the number of lines and spaces between scale degree 1 and the top note of the interval. We also take note of the fact that our key signature, C major, contains no sharps and no flats. Thus, every diatonic interval that we can make will contain only natural notes i.e. C natural, D natural, E natural, F natural, etc. We remember that diatonic intervals in any major key will always occur in the same pattern. Perfect unison, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave. In this next illustration, we are reminded of the way in which interval qualities are formed. Beginning with perfect intervals, we add one half step in pitch to change the quality from perfect to augmented. We subtract one half step in pitch to change the quality from perfect to diminished. Moving to the major intervals, we add one half step in pitch to change the quality from major to augmented, while we subtract one half step in pitch to change the quality from major to minor. Subtracting another half step in pitch from a minor interval will change the quality from minor to diminished. Here, we see this same diatonic pattern, perfect unison, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave, is repeated in every major key. This is due to the function of the key signature making sure that the whole step-half-step -step pattern of the scale remains consistent regardless of the starting note. We can use the key signature in the construction of intervals to provide us with a known starting point from which to modify the quality to that desired. Let's do some exercises constructing intervals upon notes other than C natural. For example, first construct a perfect fifth over an F sharp. First, notate the F sharp at the specific pitch desired. Beginning with the F sharp labeled as 1, count upward 5 lines and spaces. We know that our fifth will be some version of C. Bringing to mind the key signature for F sharp major, 6 sharps, we determine that the diatonic version of our C occurs as a C sharp. Since the fifth that we have created conforms to the key signature 4 and is diatonic to F sharp major, this fifth is a perfect fifth and requires no modification. Let's build a minor third over a D flat. Notate the D flat where desired. With the D flat labeled as 1, count upward 3 spaces and lines. Our third will be some version of F. The key signature for D flat major, 5 flats, tells us that our diatonic version of F occurs as an F natural. We recall that the diatonic third in any major key is a major third. Since we want to construct a minor third and our diatonic third is major, we need to modify the F natural by lowering its pitch one half step to an F flat. Build a minor seventh below a C sharp. Notate the C sharp where desired. Label the C sharp as 7 and count downward through the lines and spaces until you reach 1. The root of our interval will be some sort of D. The key signature for the root of our interval is that for D major, two sharps. From the key signature, we determine that the C sharp is already diatonic to the key and that the D occurs as a D natural. The diatonic seventh here would be a major seventh. Since we are looking to create a minor seventh, and since the diatonic interval is a major seventh, and since the C-sharp is diatonic to the key, we can only change the D-natural to a D-sharp in order to decrease the pitch distance by one half step, thereby making our desired minor seventh. Construct an augmented fourth over a G-flat. Notate the G-flat where desired. Counting G-flat as one, count upward four lines and spaces. Our fourth will be some version of C. 
The key signature for G flat major tells us that the diatonic version of C is a C flat. The diatonic fourth is, of course, a perfect fourth. In order to change the diatonic perfect fourth to an augmented fourth, we need to increase the C's pitch by one half step to a C natural. Build a diminished fifth over G flat. Notate the G flat for the desired pitch placement. Beginning at the G flat bass line, count upward five lines and spaces. The fifth will be some sort of D. Using the key signature for G-flat major, observe that the diatonically occurring D is a D-flat. The diatonic fifth in any major key is a perfect fifth. To change the perfect fifth to a diminished fifth, we must decrease the pitch of our D-flat by one-half step to a D-double-flat. The D-double-flat is enharmonically equivalent to a C-natural, and therefore the diminished fifth will sound the same as our G-flat to C augmented fourth constructed previously. This concludes part two of our introduction to intervals. In part three, we will learn to recognize and produce the musical tones associated with the written notes.